Hi, I want to say a few words about marine social ecological systems and the ecosystem approach. In a simple term, a marine social ecological system is a marine system and society. Of course, humans consume fish, and the ecosystem approach could mean consuming less fish to leave more fish for other components of the ecosystem. A lot of times, fish are not consumed directly by humans, by caught by fishing vessels that are impacted by market demands, which in turn generate products to the consumers, as well as um, uh, external drivers such as fuel prices, subsidies, policies are influencing the behavior of fishing fleets. Several different types of fishing fleets may be targeting the same fish species, but also different fish species. Different kinds of fish species may be eating each other, and, the, and competing with each other, of course, for resources. And those resources could be zooplankton further down the food web, or phytoplankton even further down the food web. Fish may also be prey and food to seabirds or marine mammals, seals or porpoises or dolphins or whales. And, of course, uh, these types of dynamics are uh, very complex because there are so many different types of interactions in the system. When fishing fleets are impacting Fish stocks, this may call ripple effects or cascading effects throughout the food web and uh, as human byproducts and uh, agricultural production on land generate uh, nutrient runoff to the sea, this nutrient may act as a fertilizer, stimulating phytoplankton production, in turn stimulating zooplankton production, which in turn may stimulate fish productivity. So these types of effects may also cascade up the food web. And on top of all these dynamics, we also, of course, have climate change and variability that's impacting all the different aspects of, of the food. <coughs> to make this a little bit more concrete, I want to explain a little bit about some of the dynamics that, that we have studied in the Baltic Sea. Uh, in the 1970s and 1980s, we had a very dramatic increase of cod, the main territory fish species in the Baltic Sea. But as the, the climatic conditions for cod deteriorated in the late 80s and 90s, and we became incre increasingly efficient in catching cod, the stock decreased pretty dramatically. At the same time, what happened was that the main prey of cod spread increased dramatically as a result of the decrease in cod stock. And this largely system change has been referred to as a regime shift, where some of the interactions I talked to you about before, the strength and the direction of the interaction between species may have changed dramatically, so that instead of cod being able to dominate the spread stock, we may, we may now be in a situation where the spread is to a larger extent able to control the cod stock. So these kinds of dynamics are uh, increasingly studied by scientists, but really it's only the last 30 years that, that we have been talking about. So if we put this uh, dynamics in some perspective, some other interesting issues may emerge. In the early 1900s, the system was completely different from what it is today. Humans were not as efficient as they are today in catching fish, and instead seals were the main predators in this system. So we started to increasingly realize this and started to shoot seals, which resulted in a large decrease in the seal stock. And later on, as our agricultural and industrial production became more efficient, uh, pollu toxic pollutants were having a negative impact on the seal stocks, which again decreased in the late 1970s. Now we're seeing an increase in the seal stock, and we don't know yet to what extent this will influence the, the food web dynamics. In addition to changing seal stocks, we also, throughout this period, have increasingly loaded the system with nutrients. Really, we've been fertilizing the system for an entire century, and in the early 1900s, the system was very low in nutrients and very high in, in seals, and now we have a completely different system with very few seals and very high nutrient loading. So, really what has happened is that the drivers have changed over time, from seal predation to being, from being a, an important driver of change in the system. We now have increasingly nutrient loading, toxic pollutants, and fishing pressure at different drivers. So drivers change over time.
force drivers can also change over space. If you imagine the Baltic Sea, with Sweden here, Finland here, Poland here, and all the other nine countries around the region. The dynamics that I talked to you about here are basically those in the central part of the Baltic Sea. But we're increasingly starting to understand how these or similar dynamics are occurring all over the region, in, but in different sub-regions, different components of the Baltic Sea are, are exhibiting similar types of regime shift. But what's interesting is that here we're seeing in the central Baltic Sea, we're seeing that perhaps climate variability and fishing pressure are important drivers of change, whereas in other regions, it may be nutrient loading that are important drivers of change. So drivers don't only change over time, they also change over space. And of course, depending on what types of ecosystem services we're preferring, we need to respond to different types of drivers to be able to respond to uh, regime shifts and avoid undesirable regime shifts. So really, in able to do this, we have to develop governance capacity at local, sub-regional, and for an entire regional scale. And that's pretty much what the ecosystem approach is really all about, being able to monitor and respond to ecosystem dynamics of multiple and interacting scales.